I'm Claudine Wong, joining you from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm joined now by Jessica Mega, who's the Chief Medical Officer and Chief Scientific Officer for Verily. Jessica, thanks so much for talking with us. Thanks so much for inviting me to be here. Okay, so the big topic we're talking about is screening and testing. You've got some sites up in terms of where people can go, getting people registered online, and really seeing how this process can work. Tell me what you guys have gotten going in the last couple of weeks and really what you're seeing in terms of how effective and how much it's working. So Verily was approached by public health officials several weeks ago to see if there's anything we could do to help contribute with screening and testing. And what was most interesting to people was this idea of creating a full program to support individuals everywhere from understanding their own risk of COVID-19 to getting testing done in a very responsible fashion and then having those results come back from a health professional. At Verily, we have been working on a number of programs, particularly Project Baseline, where we were able to stand this up in a matter of days, both the software platform as well as the sites where the testing is occurring. Because it's complicated. You have a lot of different things you're working on. They, every, everyone wants this to be very quick and very fast. You had the Bay Area really in a situation where we were doing shelter in places faster than anyone else in the country. And it was, it was confusing. What was the biggest challenge really? I mean, first you had to get the supply of tests. Second, you had to reach out to the public. Third, you had to figure out a way to make it safe for everyone. I mean, I think there are so many different components. Where did you find that that was the biggest hurdle to cross? As a physician, I can say that this pandemic is affecting people in an unprecedented way. One of the main challenges that public health officials were facing is how do you get the tests to the right people at the right time? If there were infinite numbers of tests, maybe everyone would be tested. But what was most important was to understand if someone was having symptoms or if they had high risk features. And so that was a critical element that the government was asking for in public health officials. So creating a way to appropriately, dynamically screen individuals to get them to be eligible for a test was critical. The second one, exactly as you said, how do you in a very streamlined fashion allow people to schedule an appointment, get their test done to avoid thousands of people showing up to a site at a given time? And then the third piece was actually standing up those sites to get the testing done by professionals and then the results back. And so I think building each of these programs along with public health officials and up to a thousand volunteers across Verily and Alphabet, that's where I saw the true power of the public-private partnership come together. Yeah, is it, I mean, because we have seen that, right? We've seen testing sites pop up in other states where within an hour they have to shut down because it's just too much. So there's all these different logistical parts of it. Where do you think the tech side of Google and Alphabet and Verily have helped with this streamlining? I mean, I mean do you think that that experience has, has made you have a different perspective on how you approach this problem that we're all dealing with? When working with our public health colleagues, their real ask was, can you help us modify different screening criteria based on the epidemiology? So really understanding what's happening with COVID-19 on the ground. So in some communities, it may be appropriate to screen frontline workers or healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. In other places, looking for people who are symptomatic with a high risk feature. And so that's where you start to see the power of using technology to support public health efforts. Over time, public health officials will be able to use these tools to, again, best serve the communities that are at the most need. How did you decide where to put these sites? You know, I mean, you're in the Bay Area, but how do you decide? How did you decide where we start? Right. Because you can start too big. You can start maybe smaller than you need to. How did you decide how to really kind of just get off the ground and get going? So such an important point. Public health officials were looking for hotbeds, places where the testing would be most valuable. We did want to start in a very measured fashion. What's been encouraging to see is in a very short period of time, we've now been able to scale testing to thousands of individuals. And so the momentum and the learnings are there. And it's something that we really wanna share broadly with the public. How many did you think you could do and have you been able to meet those goals or surpass them? I think a few weeks ago, uh, none of us would have thought that we would have been able to make this much progress. And we're just really honored to be part of any way that we can help address COVID-19. The other piece that we've done in conjunction with public health officials is share all of our learnings in a guide, whether people want to continue to move forward with programs like our own, or if someone's standing up a program 
somewhere very far away, we want to make sure that the best lessons are being shared. And what I see across the entire community is people coming together to try to address this epidemic. Okay, so tell us how one of take us through just how one of these sites work. I mean, people get online first, right? And they and they put in their information. Just take us through step by step. Sure. Uh, people go online. They do provide their information so that public health officials can get tests to the right people. From there, individuals are able to schedule a time and a location that's convenient for them. People then show up at the site. It is a drive-through site. That's one to protect the individuals as well as individuals who are performing the tests. And let me stop you really quickly. What parameters do they, what information do they need to put in? Because I think some people are like, what, where do I put the information and, and what parameters are you going by with, by who gets these tests? Because I know uh, locally Hayward had a testing site and they had a certain criteria Then it changed the next day. Then they had to go back and change it again, just be, be, in terms of demand and supply. What are your parameters for who gets a test at one of your sites? So currently the California Department of Public Health is using the criteria of people who have a symptom and then are in a high risk category. The high risk categories they're describing are people who have a known exposure to COVID-19. The second category for high risk is people who are on the front lines, whether it's a, someone working in the police force or someone who's a firefighter, people who work in prisons and people who work in healthcare. And then the third category is individuals who are over the age of 60 and have some other disease or comorbidity perhaps something like diabetes. Those are the groups that currently California Department of Public Health has indicated as the highest risk individuals. But as you note, the epidemiology will continue to change. And as testing becomes more available, the screening criteria will continue to widen. So I think that's really important for viewers to know. Yep. So they have to have a symptom and then check one of those other boxes. They don't have to have a doctor refer them. In this program, there is a group of healthcare professionals that are working both on ordering the tests as well as getting those test results back to individuals with the appropriate and caveated medical information. Okay, so they get they get a green light or they get something that tells them after they register and they fill out these forms and the medical professionals look at it and they say, okay, yes, you can come get a test? That's right. And how quickly does that happen? Uh, the screening happens in part of the flow. So that happens almost instantaneously. People will know if they're currently eligible to be screened through this program at this time. Then they can use an online screener to pick top spots of times that would be most convenient to them. The turnaround time of the test is reliant a bit on the lab providers themselves. I know lab providers across both our country as well as internationally are working as hard as they can on the turnaround time. As the results become available, they then come back to the individual again through a healthcare provider. Okay, so once they go to the screener, though, they, they do online, then they come to the site, let's say it's the San Mateo County Fairgrounds, right? And they, they drive up, and when you, when you say it's a drive-through, and I've seen the videos of this happening, right? They come up, and, and they really don't have a lot of contact with anyone when they initially check in, right? That's right. I know many people are sheltering in place. People are trying to use the very best practices. These sites have been incredibly thoughtful around what is the right public health guidelines to protect the individuals and also the workers who are on site. So people do drive up. They then show that they are the person who, uh, who is supposed to be getting tested. And then from there, the swabbing and testing is done on site. On site. And then they leave. And then within a few days or however long the lab takes, is it, what is the range? A couple of days versus a week or... The guidance is between two and five days. In some cases, the turnaround time was a bit longer as labs were getting caught up. But what we're seeing across the board, both in our program and others, is the turnaround time is getting quicker and quicker. And then the aftercare is if they have a positive test, then what happens for them? Do you refer them or do, you know, or is that part done and you just let them know and let them know they should seek some more medical advice from their provider? So we've had wonderful partnerships with groups of healthcare providers where that information is returned back, particularly in the case of, of the test being positive with the appropriate guidance, because we know the symptoms that people are experiencing can be quite diverse. COVID-19 is proving to us that the way individuals respond depends on who they are, their prior history. And so medical professionals are able to provide guidance for some people who may be able to stay at home and care for themselves, and then other extremes where it is very important for people to seek more acute and urgent care. So do you have enough tests? I mean, for everyone who registers and, and meets the guidelines and 
should get a test? Are there enough for them at your sites to, to meet the need? So the testing continues to become an area of interest. There are more and more tests coming online. We have sites up and running in San Mateo, Santa Clara, Riverside, and Sacramento. And I would encourage anyone who feels that they meet these criteria to go online, check their availability, and schedule a test. We continue to evolve the criteria with the California Department of Public Health. And importantly, as more tests become available, more people will be able to be screened. But do you have to turn people away right now? Or do they just have to wait longer? Or how does that work? What we're seeing is most people who meet the criteria have been able to schedule a test or we've gone back into the system and at the direction of the Department of Public Health have invited people to come and have a test. There are some people where the testing wasn't available through this program, but we are continuing to go back and pull as many people through as need to be tested. Okay. So and in that in terms of when you're doing guidelines for people who are wanting to try to model best practices and wanting to try to learn from from all each other as this community kind of all tries to tackle this pandemic. What are the things that you're learning that are the, the must do's and, and the watch out for's? What we're learning as a public health and a medical community is understanding some basic health advice, things like washing your hands. The other thing is where it's best for people to shelter in place. And I believe that there have been a lot of really thoughtful individuals, people who have spent much of their life thinking about this type of epidemiology that have been able to share that information with local health authorities, state health authorities, and federal health authorities. And so what I have seen is a huge amount of people coming together as a community to figure out these kinds of best practices and, and when to guide not only medical care, but also what we do as a community more broadly. What is your long-term plan for these sites? Is it to see more patients at those sites, more people who want to be screened? Is it to you know, make them bigger or to do more micro sites across the area or California? I mean, where, what is the long-term term plan for, for this program? Well, from a Verily perspective, we have been so happy to be able to partner in this public-private partnership and help in any way we can. These particular sites stood up, the first two in Santa Clara and San Mateo. Over time, we expanded to Sacramento and Riverside. If this continues to be something of interest to the community more broadly, we're here to help in any way we can. And I think the other point about sharing best practices, and we shared a guide that is available online for communities really wherever they are. So our, our hope is to be as helpful as we can in any way we can. How many people from Verily are working on this? I mean, and in terms of people who you know raised their hand and said, I wanna be on that project. So we were fortunate that as a company, we've been working in life science and healthcare for several years now. And so there were a number of different programs when we were asked to help where we could turn to. And one of them was Project Baseline where we have individuals who have been working on this platform. It's a, an effort to really bridge research and care and think about the best evidence and how do you accelerate clinical research. And so people on that team, when we were asked to raise our hand very quickly said they're all in. The interesting piece is we had to marry that software platform with the actual sites that needed to be stood up. And so we had over a thousand volunteers from Verily and Alphabet more broadly partner with local health officials to do this in an incredibly rapid way. Uh, people were volunteering from anything from helping people set up their appointments to the actual on-site activities. Now that the program has continued to scale, it's scaling on behalf of the California government and maybe beyond as we move forward. That those operations have been transitioned over, but it has been just amazing to see the outpouring on both in groups that I'm involved in, as well as our broad partnerships, how many people want to help with this effort. Yeah, I, mean, I think everyone wants to do whatever we can to, to get in front of this. I think, uh, you know, I, I've seen the Bay Area getting praise uh, for its early shelter in place, for hopefully flattening, flattening the curve at, at some point you know, here and, and having our numbers plateau, uh, you know, you you feel for communities like New York City and, and areas where uh, they, they aren't seeing those numbers uh, flatten and, and they need to. If the Bay Area has a surge coming, like we still expect it to come, can these sites handle that? The sites advantage. Yeah, in terms of yeah. growing. 
So two things. One is, uh, and again, I'll, I'll speak both uh, from this program as well as as a physician. What we're seeing on the hospital side is hospitals are incredibly busy, especially hospitals that are in hot spots. Okay. And so what we're trying to do is allow hospitals to really focus on caring for individuals. What the state has been interested in is also setting up community-based testing sites that can complement and augment the work that hospitals are doing. So what you'll likely see is people fighting on many fronts to try to address this particular pandemic. I will say that I know that our local sites at the state and at the federal level, people are doing everything they can to get more tests in place. And you're starting to see that. Is it hard to predict? I mean, I, I think, you know, my, my standard line is what seemed like a good idea on Monday seems like a crazy idea on Wednesday when we suggest it because this, this world that we're living in changes so so quickly, how hard has it been to adapt to all the new challenges that that come up, whether it's it's different, you know, guidelines, different standards, different needs, you know, changes in, in which areas become the hotter spots and which ones seem to to calm down. I know that it has been a very complex time for people across the board. One thing that we have been able to do and we came into this program was trying to create tools that would be able to respond and be dynamic as, as public health officials learned more about the epidemiology. What might be the right screening criteria for testing, as you mentioned, three weeks ago may be different than it is today. It may be different if you live in a community where the disease is spreading very rapidly as opposed to one where it's been contained. So the most important thing from our perspective has been it, this idea of building tools and a platform that allows people to respond as information becomes available. So I guess if, if you're in the Bay Area right now and you know you've got a couple of sites to choose from, but let's say you're in the East Bay or the North Bay and it, it's a drive down to get to San Mateo County, but you really, you're a healthcare provider and, and you've got a fever or you've got, are you suggesting that anyone in the Bay Area really log on and, and try to do it that way? Are you... What is, what is the best message for people? You know, there are nine barrier counties and, and two Verily sites. Uh, you know, what is, what is your message to everyone in terms of how to, for best practices for your sites as well? Yeah, so it's definitely gonna be a fabric and a tapestry of different people contributing in any way. We have the two sites that started in San Mateo and Santa Clara. We have the sites in Riverside and Sacramento. We hope to continue to spread sites if that's of interest to the public and the real, call to action is if you think you need to be tested, we're here in partnership with California and with Department of Public Health, go online, check out, see whether this is a program that's right for you. But what I would say is we're seeing communities come together to offer a number of different programs so that the right people can get tested. Do you feel like you, that, I mean, we have seen a lot of community in this, we've seen a lot of partnerships, we've seen a lot of different groups talking to each other are you seeing that on your end of saying, I, I, that's, that's what gives people hope, right? Are we all working together and, and is it working well to work together? The thing that has provided me the most hope in the last few days and weeks has been a tremendous outpouring of people working together, people that may not have worked together in the past, people in different parts of the government, people in different industries, people who sometimes had different jobs. Um, coming together. And I think that to me has been the most motivational piece of what I see both in the work that we're doing and more broadly. So I do think it's a time where we need to really respond as a community to get through this complex pandemic uh, that we know through the COVID-19 experience. Yeah. Do you envision a day where you don't have to have parameters to get the test? Because in, in the world where we talk about how many people may be asymptomatic and and everyone wants to know, you know, if they're carrying something and possibly spreading something, even if they're not sick. Do you envision a time where, where maybe people can just show up and there will be enough tests to go around and, and we will get a better, uh, you know, I mean, you're, you, you deal with numbers all the time. And when we get really, really accurate numbers, because we have so many tests available. I mean, can you see, can you see that day coming? <laughs> There's a lot of discussion about that, particularly because we all know that some people who experience the, the illness actually don't have manifestations or they would be called typically asymptomatic. And so there, there 
is discussion around what would it look like if testing was broadly available and we could get a true sense of what's going on at a community level. So I maintain optimistic and, and hopeful that the testing will continue to, to be more available. At the same time, I give public health officials a lot of credit for trying to marry the right test with the right person, understanding the world that we're living in today. Yes. And we, uh, we want to get help to the people who need it immediately and who need it most and uh, make sure that that, that, is, that is happening for the people who are sick. So Jessica Mega, the Chief Medical Officer and Chief Scientific Officer for Barely, I, I really appreciate the chat and the information and uh, the work you guys are doing to get as many people tested as possible. I appreciate the conversation. Thanks so much. Be well.